Oh, g'day guys, it's Matt here. Welcome to the channel. Been a little bit of action over the weekend, actually. We've got Tiny One back here for a bit of love and affection. Um, it's got to have a little bit of work done to it. Some of it will probably hold off um, until it really needs doing, but there's a few things like oil leaks, hoses, that sort of stuff. Um, basically, when we finished working with it and got into sewing, we just left it didn't have time to do anything so we just had to had to leave it how it was and now's the time to give it a bit of love while we have a bit of time <laughs> So that is the plan. We've got to drop all the belly guards. Um, I probably won't be here for it, but um, there might be a bit of footage here and there of what's happening to this. But um, a few people have been asking for a size comparison um, because it is hard on camera to see how big these things actually are. But there's our little, I think it's a two and a half ton forklift. And that's the dozer. So that is how big they are. Well, we were just minding our own business over there. And uh, I think this is uh, one of those farmers' way to get the, one of the rippers out. You just find a bit of a hill and drive her off it, and and that way it'll uh, make it a bit easier to get that ripper out. The center ripper we've got in here is a lot longer than the others. So over there, you can see the two outer ones. Um, what we usually do is just sink them in, and then you just take the pins out, lift it up, and then when you want to go put them back on, you can just back up to that and uh, and yeah, get them back in. But the center one obviously can't get it in the ground far enough so that when you lift the ripper box, it comes out. Don't push it over the edge, Josiah. for the wind noise. Righto, now you can see that with all the rippers out, we can get in here. Again, I'm gonna be taken off, so it won't be done by me, thankfully. <laughs> but that uh, guard that goes over the transmission at the back, it all fills up with sticks and rubbish and dirt. So that's gotta come out too. So um, yeah, all the belly guards underneath and that. So with the rippers out, we can get this platform, ripper platform down all the way and it'll um, come out. So I think there's some issues with the decelerators. That's what they're testing at the minute. It's 
nearly the end of the day. I'm back here, so we'll get a bit of an update of what's going on. It's all right, I won't be as in your face as Dad is. <laughs> so what's happening here? We've got getting making some progress. Yeah, we think so. Still got the um, oh yeah, got the belly plates underneath there. Just yeah, still got the got, transmission one to do. Yeah, just working out how's the safest way to do it. Yeah. Obviously, it weighs a lot. Oh no, that's good. I'll go see if we can see under the front. See what the belly plates look like. This is what it's like with the belly plates down. Might be a bit dark in here, but so there's the sump. And yeah, just with the mud and dust and grass, this is just what they look like. It's not not ideal, but it's just what they have to do. And we've got all our torque converter and other bits and bobs up here. So that's the, if you see those bits of aluminium tape up the top there, that's the floor underneath the seat. So you can just about get to everywhere you need to get to from the top, but yeah, these all need a good clean out. Peter back again, just a quick update. The, um, this is the belly guard off the transmission, which hangs off the back. It's all full of grease and oil. And that's the reason why <coughs> it's off. The transmission was leaking significantly enough to warrant some attention. It may have to come out. That's the transmission is this big circular thing here on the back of the the um, final drive housing. So unusual. The transmission's on the back and not in between the engine and the the final drive or the uh, bevel gears, but. It certainly theoretically makes it easy to get out. I think we're going to have to pull that out and put a new O-ring or find the source of the leak anyway. Um, but in the overall scheme of things, just in for a minor repairs, um, hose update, um, hydraulic sandwich blocks, uh, O-ring kits, that sort of stuff, just to get it back to a, um, a reliable non-leaking stage. Um, but even minor repairs on these things can be time consuming and a little bit expensive but anyway we uh, we're happy to do that because the work that they can do for us is enormous we're back here again um, now if you haven't twigged already this video is going to be over a couple of weeks so the first part of this video was taken I don't know probably 10 days ago or so um, so yeah there's been a little bit of a break not much happening on tiny one for a little while um, just while we we're tidying off a bit of sewing for the neighbor we had the spreading going on and then obviously rain and things and it just makes it a bit messy for, for things to happen in the rain um, but there has been a bit of progress. We will probably have to pull a transmission out, um, which we will. There's a lot of oil all in around there. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to have to pull that off. And I actually have to make up a jig to be able to do that. Um, it's probably gonna be about two tons worth of stuff by the time there's the parts that go actually into the, the housing. We've got to lift from up there, around the fuel tank and down. So yeah, I've got to make up a bit of a C jig and that way yeah we should be able to just lift it straight up and out and um yeah then that can be the seals or whatever's leaking can be fixed there and then um yeah so hopefully that's not too intense so you might have wondered what all the noise is going on up there it just size up there with the descaler and yeah trying to clean out the v and um we'll just jump up there and and have a look just hold up there josiah can't hear a thing <laughs> so he's uh he's been having fun here better give a wave <laughs> so we've got the turbos pulled off here um and that 
is what needed to happen to be able to get in to I'll see if we can see in here um, you can see these elbows now they're the intake elbows and that is one that was replaced uh, well it must have been last year or a fair while ago actually it might have even yeah I can't remember exactly but there's a couple of them have been replaced um, because I had some pitting in it and holes um, now what caused that was coal dust um, years ago this was in a coal mine and the coal dust sort of settles down in there and is quite corrosive I might be able to see can't really see but that one there there's a lot of pitting in that and um, I don't know if any of them are all the way through but I reckon you give them a bit of a tap and you'd probably poke a hole straight through them so they needed to be replaced but we weren't too concerned while ever it was still packed up with all the the dust and that because it was hard as cement basically and um, yeah it wasn't wasn't gonna suck any dust in um, but yeah now's a good time to be able to do that so we are still got to pull out a few of the I think that center intake um, bit there and I don't know if the exhaust manifolds are coming off but um, yeah there's still a bit of work needs to happen to that righto you can continue and um, I think as far as updates go that's what we're doing but um, yeah that's probably basically going to be my job today is just making this jig and see how far we get with that on top of the transmission there's a square plate and it's got four holes so I'm going to get a bit of that uh, 2x4 or uh, fairly heavy walled steel and I'm going to just weld that up to there and then from that um, we're going to have a bit more coming out on an angle going up and then um, yeah then working out what we're doing up there. Right, oh, we're a bit further along. I keep telling myself I'll do a time lapse of when I'm starting to put it all together but because I'm making it up as I go I'm just sort of adding bits here and there and it's um yeah not not overly exciting stuff but yeah I've got the holes drilled um, I've, I, they're fairly well oversized um, just to allow for a bit of yeah you know, I guess if it warps a bit and different stuff when I finish welding it um, but what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna brace that um, down to there because where this bolts you've got the fuel tank comes up here and goes up like that so um, yeah I need to then up the top here, weld another bit along the, the top and then, yeah, brace that um, because the lifting point will be out here. So um, this steel here is, I think that was, uh, I'm pretty sure that's six mil thick. So yeah, she's pretty sturdy stuff. But yeah, we'll just keep plodding along, um, finding bits of scrap steel that I can use. Well guys, this is the final, well, almost final stage um, just giving it a quick test fit needs a little bit of modifying but um, and obviously the welds need filling in so I think it should work and I'm going to be spraying so I won't be probably involved with this the transmission coming out but got Phil over there hey Phil yeah. how good are you on a GoPro Not real good. <laughs> so yeah I'll see if I can get some time lapse or something of the transmission coming out but um yeah we'll just see see how that all goes well guys we're back here this morning um i'm just about to go off spraying like i said but looks like phil and brad have just been finishing off this uh, jig and it won't actually be that long until the transmission is going to come out we well hopefully i've sort of set up the camera um ready to yeah do a bit of a time lapse but just got to make sure someone remembers to turn it on a lot of weld on that, so <laughs> she should be strong enough. <laughs> Don't want to drop a transmission, that's for sure. Are you going to remember to turn the GoPro on, Phil? Should be. <laughs> I'm not Brad. <laughs> Brad just, he's allergic to GoPros. We can see here down the hell hole. Um, so yeah, the little come along there to lower down the, the drive shaft. Um, so that should mean that the transmission can come out. So there's a fair bit of room down there.
guys. Another morning. Uh, the fog's just lifted, so it's uh, turning out to be a nice sunny day. Um, but the transmission is out. I'm just about to go spraying again, so we'll get a quick update. But she's all in pieces, and it's actually not as big as you sort of think, but still, still pretty beefy. So we've got Ozzy here. He's the one that's been overseeing whipping this all out. Yeah, so I think we've found the leak. Mostly leaking from your lube pressure, O-rings on the diff and your adapter housings going to the transmission. So that's that one there and the oil oil goes through. And that one there was very hard and flat and like concrete <laughs> as were every other black O-ring on it. So it's a good time to uh, update the seals. <laughs> Not very flexible anymore. <laughs> I think they've lost their ability to seal, hey? Very flat and hard. So, yes. Anyway, I guess it's probably, the tr this transmission mightn't have been out for 10,000 hours, so. That's, um, that's not too bad considering. So yeah, it's all in pieces. Got the clutch packs here. Um, but yeah, I think we don't really need to go through them. Um, everything was working and yeah, I mean, you're not gonna, we're not expecting another 10, 15,000 hours out of this. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but stopping the leaks will be a very nice thing. But anyway, no, we'll leave it there and we'll catch you in the next one might be part two.